Hey, what is going on guys? Vex and I bring another tutorial. So today I'll be showing you how to make an intro just like mine. So that's just like the one you saw a few seconds ago. Now this is a sort of in-depth tutorial. So what I'm going to be doing is using a Premiere instead of Vegas because I tried to uh, turn this into a Vegas version and it just was too difficult. Vegas's keyframing is just really poor and the whole process was a bit of a pain and it was taken way too long. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to do it in Premiere instead. And then obviously if you use After Effects, you can carry this over to there as well. Because After Effects Premiere are, you know, basically the same. They've, they have very similar keyframing processes. So that's pretty it. But before you get into that, the first thing you do is open Photoshop. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now as you can see, I've made an example. So what we're doing is just replicating this right now. So the first thing you're going to do is open up, click uh, File, New. And then you want to click on 1920 by 1080 on the width and height and then transparent background and we can just name this outro then click create and you get a big blank document so the first one you do is want to type and name so that's fixana designs and then drag this over to the middle now i'm using the font uh, gotham black i've set the size to 50 and then the distance between returns 40 and then everything else default plus italics italics is your option and the fonts up to you but just make sure you use something thick and bold so no sans fonts and then you want to make uh, in italics is really up to you but i definitely prefer i think it just adds a bit of something to the text and to me it just looks a bit nicer now once we've got our text before we center it we need to add our logo so i'm going to open up this here and I'll just drag in a plain or see-through background of my logo, which if you do have your own logo, I presume you all have. Snap that to the center of the text, size it down to the same size, and then move it off to the side. So just like that, it's pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is hold Control on both of these layers, Control T, drag and snap these to the center. What we're gonna do is click New Layer, drag it to the bottom, hit control backspace or control delete, double click on it and you get your layer styles, click on gradient overlay. As you can see, I've already got mine, but the way you do this is you click on the color region, click on the bottom one down here, and then that will allow you to change the bottom left hand corner color. And I've just made this a nice deep blue. And then the other side, and I've made it a paler, more greeny turquoisey blue. Once you've done that, you set the degrees to 60. Yours will probably look like this by default. So 60. And then the scale, which is like how long it takes for the gradient to happen. I've put this to 120 just to give you a nice soft gradient. So click OK once you've done that. Right click on the layer and you want to click Rasterize Layer Style. What we're going to do is pick the Rectangle Selection tool. Drag until you get to the halfway point. So I'll give you a pink line right in the middle. Just like that and you want to hit ctrl x and ctrl v ctrl t on that layer to drag it down back to the bottom and then you want to move that below so we'll name this one t for top and then b for bottom now what this does is we're going to keyframe these so that they swipe up either way and then you can see that they'll swipe up and just a bit quicker if we have two separate layers name this name and we've got our logo and then obviously once we've swiped these away, the white could become a bit of a contrast problem with the footage behind. So what we're gonna do is create a shadow for that. So where we do this is hold control on both of these, control J to copy, control E to merge, drag that below everything, I'll hide the blue, double click on the layer, hit drop shadow. You can just copy my settings, but it definitely depends on the shape and size of your logo, as well as the type of font you're using. But if it looks something like this with a pretty nice thick uh, shadow, so for me that's 10 and 30 with the spread and size and then opacity to 100. So click OK once you've done that. And then we can, what we can do is just leave that there and we'll call it shadow. And then that's pretty it. So as you can see, when your side disappears, you have got this nice shadow left. But before the blue disappears or before it swipes away, it still looks this nice clean with no drop shadows. Because you can see that if we put the blue beneath, it actually looks really hideous. So that's pretty much it. Now what we can do is we just save this as a PSD. So we'll just do it on our desktop and we'll call it outro. Click save. And then what we do now is we're going to open up Premiere. Okay, so once you're in Premiere, this is what you'll see. So we'll click new project. Just leave this all at default and we'll call it intro. 
Well, I'm pretty sure I called the Photoshop document outro, but what I meant was intro. And then put this on your desktop, select folder, click OK. And then what I'm going to do is reset this back to the default layout just so you guys see it all the same. So it already is, it's on editing. So just, you know, select editing up the top here and you'll get the same as mine. And so what we want to do is we need to create a timeline. So we do this by right clicking on the project, new item, sequence. Just name this you know, sequence. And the settings, you want this to be on custom, 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution you're using, but I definitely recommend at least 1080p. Progress, uh, square pixels, progressive scan, 60 FPS time code, leave these at default, and the preview, if you're getting a bit of lag, just uncheck these and lower this. But that one doesn't actually make a difference to your final render, it's just about the preview window. Then click OK. So now we need to get a Photoshop document in. Now the beauty of using just Adobe products is we don't have to render everything as, or export everything rather, as PNGs. So what we can do now is we go File, and then Import. We want to select the PSD we made, and then what this little pop-up will come up, and you want to click, instead of merge layers, you want to put individual layers, so this will allow us to edit each one individually. Click OK, and then you get this folder, so double click on that, and then drag all of these onto your timeline. Now we can hold Alt and zoom in. So we want to put these in order, so we'll put a logo at the top, then we'll put our name, we'll put the top blue, bottom blue, and the shadow underneath. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to start editing or keyframing rather the logo. So what you want to do is go over to effect controls up the top and this is where you edit all of your settings and keyframing. So the first thing you want to do is put this scale and we're going to click this little icon on the left and this will allow us to do keyframing. So do that and then you want to set your size to something that looks pretty small, you can barely see it. So for me that'll be 20. And then what we're going to do is go a few frames across so we'll try that 60 frames per second, remember that there will be 60, so by the time we get to 30 mark, that will be half a second. So we'll try 20, and then we'll set this back to 100. What we can do is just play this back, see how fast that is, and it's a little bit slow, so we might just make that uh, 15. And now what I usually like to do is rather than just having a solid big like that, I like to go to maybe one frame before, so 14, and we'll set this to 110 and then we'll go to maybe 16 and then we'll set this to 100 and this will give us a bit of a bounce and you can see it looks pretty nice might move them a uh, further apart 13 and then if we click this little drop down here this will show us the smoothness so as you can see right now this is all sharp right angles and what this is going to do is give us really juddery animation so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on them and the simplest way is just click auto bezier and that'll give us nice curves and none of this like sharp angles so if I just undo it you can see this is super sharp it suddenly stops so this will just fix that and give us a bit of a smoother animation and then we zoom out and that's pretty it so just play this back you can see that actually looks really nice so now what we're going to do is we want to animate at we we'll actually want to animate this to slide across and then back the other way just like it does in mine so what we're going to do for this is we're going to enable our name so we can see how far across this needs to slide left and right so now as you can see here what i've done is i've actually made it a little bit uh, smaller than the text so in order to fix this because you need to definitely have it bigger than the text to make the uh, swipe across look right so i'm going to set this to maybe 105 we'll try 110 actually looks pretty good and then if I go back to this remember one of the bounce so this one I'll set to 120 Now what we're gonna do now is keyframe again, and we want it to be over to the right hand side So for that instead of editing the scale option we need to do position So again, we need to put a keyframe and then put this we'll just zoom in a bit here And we want to maybe make it last oh, I'm not sure how long maybe half a second So we'll just go to uh, 40 and we'll see how that works. And then what we we'll do is slide it across. So this is the X axis and this is the Y. So slide it across past the edge of a text, make it 1650. Nice square numbers makes everything a bit simpler and easy to remember. So if we watch this back, we can see it pops up and then it slides across. Now that does feel a little quick to me, the sliding across. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend it 
Now, if you're wondering how I'm jumping uh, five frames at a second, then what I do is I just hold shift and that'll give me a nice five using the right hand and left hand arrow keys. If I don't hold shift, I'll just do one at a time. So we're gonna set this to the minute. And then I also felt that it's a bit sudden afterwards, after the pop, it's a bit sudden. So we'll set this to maybe 25. Now, a lot of this is just kind of feeling and you got to try and judge how the animation looks and how it feels and it will vary depending on you know, how long your name is. So you really can't just totally copy mine. You will have to muck around with it a bit yourself. So it looks really good. So once this minute is up, we'll just hold it there. Uh, so maybe just 20, uh, 15 frames. So we'll just put, uh, click this button, put another frame in and we'll just make our animation hold for that region. And then we'll do, so this lasted from 25 to the minute, so that it's a total of 35 frames. So what we're gonna do is do the same again, so that'll be 50. And we'll just go all the way across to 50, and then we're gonna put it all the way back to the left-hand side. So we're gonna sit nicely with our name. So if we watch this back here, comes up, slides across, and slides back. Now, as you can see, sliding back is a bit faster because it's a further distance, so we need to actually extend this a bit. So we'll do it this way. That looks good. So you can see we've just got all these uh, really juddery edges. So what I'm gonna do is you want a nice curve between all of them, so I'm gonna right click. And what we can do is for temporal interpolation, we can just try maybe Bezier, but that's still giving us quite a juddery look. So we'll do it will do ease out, and then for the next one, ease in, ease out, and then we'll do ease in for this one. Now that just gives us two nice curves for our animation. So we play this all back here, slides across, and then slides back, and that looks really, really good. So now, of course, we need to do the text so that it uh, appears as the logo does. So what we want to do is go to the keyframe where the text is the last keyframe where the logo is in the center. So that is at 25 frames. And we're going to drag and start our name there. Now what we're going to do is we go to the effects tab and we need to get the crop option. So we just go over to effects down the bottom, type in crop and we can get the crop effect on. This will allow us to crop either side. So, so just click on crop right there and then what you can do is go and drag over here. So what we'll do is we'll make our text completely invisible at the start. I'm gonna go click back on the logo layer view when it reaches the side. So that is at exactly one second. Go back to this crop layer. Now I actually forgot to turn on the keyframe option, so make sure you turn on the keyframe option and then just drag that back to the beginning. And then this is right where it's appearing. So again, the crop will just stay right there until that point. And then we go back, see when it starts to move. So that's at 115. So then at 115, we just click this button to have sort of hold for that distance. And then we wanna go back to the logo, view when it finishes, 210, then go back, and that's at 210. And then we wanna click on crop and we can make it be the full distance all the way along. So now if we play this back, it should pretty reasonably well appear as our logo you know goes across but because we've put a curve or a bezier on this we need them to line up so what we're going to do is this is still you know really juddery we can go and look at what we have here so here we have a nice curve so we want to go back here we actually don't need that keyframe right click on this ease out right click on this ease in and that'll give us a nice curve and now these should line up really well so as you can see, as the logo swipes across, the text appears with it, and the line where the text is cropping is always behind our logo. So right now, this is what we've got, and that looks really good. Now there's a slight problem down there, I didn't have the crop far enough across to cut all of the text out, so we'll just make it 94. And that should fix it for us, yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much it for the text and the logo. So now we can do the blue. So after this has appeared, we wanna maybe wait a little bit. So this is at 210, so we're gonna go maybe to 230. And we wanna start, well actually we wanna have our blue the whole time for that. But we just wanna make sure that we don't uh, do anything with the blue before that point, because obviously there'll just be too much going on. 
So 230, we can now edit our blue. So what I'm gonna do is click on position and put up, put a keyframe right there. And then we wanna maybe take half a second for it to swipe up or swipe down. And then select the Y axis. And then you wanna just drag that right up off the top of the screen. So that will be to zero. And then on the bottom one, we wanna do the same thing. So we're gonna go over to 230 position, uh, just a default and go over to three and then set this to zero. Oh, that'll actually move it the wrong way, my bad. Just wanna set this to double 560, which will be 1120. And then I'll be off the screen. So as you can see here, swipes across, text appears, blue swipes away. So let's approach that, uh, pretty straightforward. Now I do just have a linear swipe on that blue, but I think on my actual one I have a linear swipe and when you, the way you wanna do it is a linear swipe because it just reveals your footage in a nice clean way uh, without too much going on. So we can just drag these to the end so that we don't, you know, so it all appears at the right time. And then of course with our shadow, we don't want that to appear until the blue has started to disappear. And then what we can do now is we can right click here and put add track, select all of them, drag them up. And then once we play this animation and we put our footage behind it, you'll see a shadow around the text. So I'll just get an example here. Right click, new item, and I'll just click color mat and make it red. That's be hideous, but just as an example and put a red behind it. And what you'll see is you've got the nice shadow behind it and then everything appears and it looks, works pretty well, pretty straightforward, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you guys. Hopefully you guys like it. Remember if you do, please have a like down below. Now I know it is Premiere, which isn't what you guys usually use. Also you can do this in After Effects, as I said, as it's pretty much the same process and the softwares are very similar. But either way, it's just not a software you guys use and I know that, but I'm really sorry. I just really couldn't turn this into Vegas as last time I did with my outro tutorial, didn't really work well, a lot of the stuff didn't carry over, so I just felt that I should do it this way in Premiere so I can give you guys the proper way, the way mine looks, and it just allows me to do a quicker, more efficient tutorial that I'm more comfortable with, because to be honest, I just find Premiere and After Effects a lot easier to use, and I feel like you guys, if you do download these and try it this way, you will too. So that's pretty much it, hope you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like or a comment if you like this, remember leave a comment for any new suggestions you have for future videos. I listen to all you guys' ideas and most of my videos are coming from you as suggestions. So that's pretty much it, I'll see you in the next one, bye.